Hey everybody, uh, my name is Mike Andrews, and I've been asked to uh, talk to you about the hunter safety course, hunting safety issues. Uh, I want to share a personal experience that I've been through. In fact, this month, 34 years ago, I got hurt in a hunting accident. Uh, at the time, I was 34 years old, and we... Uh, Lived here on a farm, raised on the farm all my life. Uh, I had a full-time job. I was healthy, strong. Never been in a hospital a, a day of my life. Uh, and all of that changed in a blink of an eye because I didn't do some things right. And that's why I'm trying to help you uh, with my experience to prevent you from getting hurt in any kind of possible way. Uh, it was first week actually of bow season that year and uh, I had an off day that day it was on a Wednesday uh, I, I didn't get to go that morning uh, for the morning hunt uh, afternoon had a bunch of errands to do and some work on the farm was late getting to my stand uh, too big a hurry and I'll talk more about that in a minute but so some of the mistakes that I made that, I, that you should not never do. Number one, always, always let somebody know where you're going. What time do you think you'll be back? If it's a morning hunt, I'll be out by 10 o'clock. If it's an afternoon hunt, uh, I'll be in by 30 minutes after dark. Uh, my family, like I said, they knew where I was going to hunt, and... Uh, but I didn't tell them where. And they also knew that I would always stay until, you know, shooting light was over with. I, I, I like that last few minutes. It's a very productive time. And uh, I got to the point of getting to the three stand and that's where everything we thought was going to be a normal day, normal hunt. And like I said, I was too hurry, too much of a hurry. And, and climbing, I was at the point of almost getting into the stand itself uh, where the platform was and my foot slipped. And uh, I fell off backwards. About 25 feet up in a mountain oak, long, long drop. No string to pull the bow up. Uh, at that point in time, you got to remember there, there was no safety harnesses. Technology has exploded. Safety items, uh, equipment, everything has gotten so much better and, 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 and easier and everything. Uh, I should not have had my bow around me. I, I, I had the string up front. Handle of the bow was in the back. Absolutely bad decision because when I landed, I landed on my bow and the handle of the bow is what actually broke my back, okay? I heard it. I heard the bones and it was not a good sound at all. And uh, immediately, I lost the feeling in my legs from the waist down. Uh, your vertebrae is numbered and everything. and. My injury happened at the T12 level, which is basically mid-back, and that's where the bow was. I had walked in for about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile to where I was at, and didn't knock me out. Uh, didn't really knock the breath out of me. Uh, actually, after the, everything, a few days later, I had one bruise on me, on my bicep on one arm where I hit a limb when I went down. Honestly, I don't believe if I had had the bow around me like I did, I don't believe I would have ended up paralyzed. But I did. And it was a life-changing event. Uh, I was scared, to be honest with you. I'd always been able to go and do it just as I pleased and health, like I said, healthy and strong. And I didn't know if I was going to make it. There was, there was internal swelling, there was trauma, and uh, I was afraid I was going to bleed to death, 
keep in mind I'm by myself. Nobody knows where I'm at. And I, this is probably two hours before dark. Okay? So I know in my mind that, that I'm not going to be expected in or nobody's going to really think anything about it for quite a while. I thought, well, maybe I need to try to get out of here. Well, that was impossible because it hurt so bad. My backbone was actually it exploded and it, uh, it, it severed the spinal cord. Uh, there's two different kinds of inju injuries. There's complete and incomplete. Uh, complete means that the cord is completely cut, and that's what happened. I just pretty much lay there, and I had a lot of time to share with the Lord. <laughs> uh, I knew, uh, I reminisced about things uh, of my childhood. Uh, like I said, I was born and raised here on this farm, and uh, spent every moment that we could hunting. Uh, it was totally different then. Uh, we hunted squirrels, we hunted rabbits, we hunted quail, we did all this, and then the deer population got to where we could, seasons were opened, and, and we deer hunted, and, and, and I loved it, and, and then turkeys came along, and we got to do that, and so I had been out in the outdoors all my life, and I had climbed trees and done all this stuff and everything else, but, uh, so after it got dark, it was fall of the year, and it was cool that night, and uh, I didn't have a lot of clothes because, you know, I thought, well, I'll hunt, get down. If I don't see anything, I'll go home. If, if, if so, uh, if I kill it or harvest anything, I can, uh, you know, uh, be home 30 minutes and not, not be cold or anything like that. So that became a factor, too, because I did end up laying there on the cold ground for a long time and ended up with pneumonia out of the deal. Okay, so that was a complication. Uh, I didn't know anything else to do but holler for help. And uh, uh, my family, 30 minutes to an hour after I didn't come in at dark, started thinking, you know, something's wrong. They didn't know where to go because I didn't, I didn't tell them exactly where I was going. And that factored into a l longer time of me being there and uh, that made actually the pneumonia a reality. Uh, finally, they, they heard me. They had to also walk in, found me. They had to come back out, call 911, and because of where it was at, the ambulance couldn't drive to where I was. So they had to come in with a stretcher and get me. And carry me out to, to the ambulance and the next place I was at, I was at the hospital, local hospital and they did x-rays and as soon as I saw the x-ray, I knew that I would never walk again. Uh, I'd had enough anatomy and biological and uh, classes that I knew the skeletal system and how the spinal cord works and all that stuff and everything. One of the local doctors, I told him, I said, you know, just medicate me, keep the pain, because it was very, very painful, to be honest with you. From local hospital to St. Thomas, which is now St. Thomas West in, in Nashville, went there. Uh, they kept me sedated, tried to get the swelling down. Uh, it took a few days, actually, for that to happen. Uh, they didn't do surgery immediately. But I think it was about four or five days later they did a, a, a restructure of my back. I have two steel rods in my back that helps hold and secure the spine. And then it was learning a new life. I mean, totally. Something that I never dreamed of. I'd never been around. And uh, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't easy. Uh, there was a lot of emotions with it. I was scared. I was disappointed. At the time, I had young children, a daughter and a son, and I knew that things were going to be different as far as what I could do with and for them and show them and teach them. So as you can tell, this is, this is changing everything. And this is what I'm hoping to do here today is to impress upon you how much 
you need to take care of and do this the right way because it can be bad because the same week that I got hurt, there's a gentleman that I didn't know, but he was from the Nashville area. He was actually a dentist, the doctor, and he fell out of a stand in our neighboring county over here, Hickman County, and uh, he was not as fortunate as me. He broke some ribs and stuff, punctured lungs, and he passed away. He did not make it. So, And that happens. Uh, one of the most, I think, one of the most uh, frequent accidents as far as hunting, other than shooting accidents, is falls. And uh, of course, there's several different ways of doing all that. I mean, you can you can do ground blinds. You don't have to be 25 foot. Everybody wants to be up in the stand, and the reason being, scent. They don't smell you. Sight. They don't see you. And that's just the way we were taught, and that's the way we learned how to hunt. Moving forward. Uh, had to go through rehab and learn a whole new process of dressing, bathing, bathroom, cooking, later driving, because obviously you use your feet to drive and everything. And I do have hand controls in my vehicle. I do still hunt. Uh, I do want to impress upon you that if you know somebody that is disadvantaged, disabled, or needs help, help them. I know the industry, and there's been more of an emphasis on that later. There's a lot of things out there that can, can help uh, people with uh, disabilities, and uh, a lot of people are willing to do that. And I, I applaud all those that are, uh, as long as I was able to do so. I was a member of the Wheeling Sportsman, which is uh, affiliated with the National Wild Turkey Federation, and they do uh, cater to handicap hunts, children that uh, that want to go to the outdoors. And you got to understand, the outdoors, everybody says the great outdoors. Well, that's right. You know, the Lord made it. It's not ours. You know, we're just stewards. How we do it, how we take care of it, and and all of that is a reflection on us for Him. First thing you need to do is be thankful that you've got this class and you've got this opportunity, you've got a chance to learn, okay? Because this is fun, guys. Man, it's fun. And you're going to make memories of a, for a lifetime. Our family, it is a family deal to deer hunt, to, to fish, to spend the out, outdoors, you know. Uh, respect the people that are your mentors, your parents, your grandparents, whoever it is, your teacher here today. Uh, they're trying to help you. Take advantage of it. I want to speak just a, a moment too to you about respecting the game you hunt. They were put here by the Lord for the reason that we're going to harvest them. And when that harvest is done, Make sure they're utilized every bit, every bit. That's the very fairest thing you can do to that animal, okay? And like I said, respect the Lord because he gave it all to us. I've been so fortunate in my lifetime, so very fortunate to be able to be out in the outdoors and there's people every single day that's wanting to take it away from me, okay? One simply, by the progression of the increase in population, uh, concrete, buildings, roads, uh, our habitat is disappearing. Thousands of acres, actually a day. Uh, conservation is a big, big word. It's a big, important part of our lives that more of us need to do as much as we possibly can so that, that you, you guys that are taking this class, when you get older and when you get bigger and you have families and you have kids and you love doing what you're doing, they deserve the chance to be able to do the same. And so that's just uh, kind of my take on it. Uh, I would, like I said, love to be there in person if you had any questions or anything like that, or if you do have any questions, 
Uh, Jerry knows my phone numbers and my contact numbers and all that stuff and everything. If anybody wants to ever ask me anything about this, and I will be glad to talk to you, show you, uh, and share with you any experience that I've possibly had. Uh, I appreciate your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. And be safe. Enjoy. Mike, tell us what happened to your son on the 25th anniversary. <laughs> My son, bow hunting, same ridge, same place, different stand, fell out also of a stand. It was a lot, it was a ladder stand and uh, scared me beyond. Brought back flooded memories. Uh, he, he landed on his shoulder and uh, it did cost him some time with that recovery but he's fine and thank goodness for that you know so it's it can happen to anybody uh you think man i'm 10 foot tall and bulletproof well you're not uh, so beware i don't want you to be scared i'm not trying to do something or anything to keep you from going that's not the purpose at all we just want you all coming back safe i've been an advocate of youth hunting on my life. You know, I got to do it. Like I said, I want you guys to do it. And I want two, three, four generations later, all of you, to be able to do it. Uh, fundamental believer in the Second Amendment. Absolutely. It's just part of the Constitution. It's the way life should be. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll never change from that. Hunting can be humbling. <laughs> Absolutely humbling. You're gonna you're gonna have disappointments. I'm gonna be honest with you. You're probably gonna have tears, and we're probably gonna have tears of joy. Okay. The enjoyment that you do receive out of this, and the reward of it all, and the sharing of it all, and family, and everything. That's that's the most wonderful experience of all. What about what about your? Do you remember your first hunting remember? trip? Or My hunting, first hunting trip? Yeah. Do you remember it? Yeah. Um, 22 single shot rifle. No scope. <laughs> uh, me and my grandfather went squirrel hunting. Uh, had, like I said, we were raised on a farm in a rural area. We had dogs. And I always usually had a good squirrel dog. Which is becoming a very rare thing anymore. And uh, so... Yeah, uh, I think I actually the the first time I, uh, I killed a, I killed a uh, a squirrel, and uh, man, I was I was so proud. It was a, it was a trophy. We brought it home, and yes, it got eight, <laughs> you know. And uh, that was the start of it. We we in those days it was totally different, totally different. Like I said technology hunter safety systems and all the equipment and everything that has floated in the last two to three decades. And all that was there. I mean, if we went coon raccoon hunting, we had a lantern, an axe, and a sack. That's how we went. There was no garments. Uh, there was no GPS, and we didn't ride around in trucks or anything. We walked, you know. And so it was totally different. But it was so enjoyable, and it was just a way of life. And I can remember my children's, uh, my son's first squirrel hunt, the first one he killed, and I can remember my daughter's and son's both first deer, and both granddaughters, and my grandson, all of it, and so it just it's it's a continual thing that I know, and I I promised my family that as long as I'm on this earth, we will do everything we can to take care of our farm and preserve it for ourselves for the wildlife we we do food plots we have year-round nutrition program uh, mineral programs year-round and we try to help them throughout the year uh, hunting season and we're very lucky in the state of tennessee first off uh, tennessee has some of the most liberal game seasons and tag numbers that versus a lot of other states. Uh, I have friends that are in Maine right now, right on a bear hunt. And state of Maine, you can't hunt in the mornings, period. 
only afternoon hunts. Some places you may apply for a tag and not get one period for 15 years. You know, and all we gotta do is have a license and we can go hunt. Uh, the seasons are, like I said, longer here. And opportunities for numbers, harvest is uh, something that uh, you should be thankful, very thankful for.